Welcome back to Kill Rock Radio here on KillRockRadio.com. My name is Rocky, back up in this motherfucker, coming at you from a bruised and beaten, but still strong Houston motherfucking Texas. Uh, we got hit with a hurricane, Hurricane Burl, which uh, kind of bent us over a burl a little bit. <laughs> Pretty much the whole fucking town was uh, without power for like a week, including me. But I am back up and rolling uh, and, and I'm here to talk a little bit of shit. So, uh, with that being said on this episode, the D tenacious D is in complete upheaval, uh, for the D right now as Kyle gas, one of the two members is in serious ass trouble for some shit. He said, uh, during a live show about, uh, Donald Trump, former president and uh, WWE hall of famer, Donald Trump. So we'll get into that. Uh, we got a ton of response to to uh, to last episode. So we're going to do an extended listener comment section because some of the shit you guys are asking about sort of is uh, leading into new topics. So we'll, we'll get into some some stuff there. So stay tuned for that. So let's start off with this Tenacious D thing. I'm a, I'm a really big fan of Tenacious D. I'm such a big Tenacious D fan. I am pretty sure that Kyle Gass of Tenacious D fucked my girlfriend, not not my current girlfriend. This is like way back in the day when everybody had like, you know, still fully colored hair and shit. I had gone with my girlfriend to go see Tenacious D and you know, my girlfriend at the time, she was, um, you know, she was kind of like, she was always into everything and she would take every fucking thing too far. And, it would end up wringing all the fun out of anything. And uh, I'm sorry for the tangent, by the way, but, uh, but yeah, so she, of course she had to take shit too far. So she's trying to get backstage after the show. I mean, you know what a motherfucker has to do to get backstage. You have to suck the dick, toss the salad. You don't just get in like, Oh, Hey everybody, let me in. And they're like, fuck. Yeah. They're at least expecting you to do a little something, something. You were incredible. Your songs, the way you uh, moved, you did it. You blew me away. So which one of you assholes is gonna fuck me? I will. Well, my girlfriend at the time, she had this friend who was like, like, dude, I don't know who she grew up to be. So I, I'm, I'm not saying anything about whoever that girl is, whoever she went on to become. And I know she had a kid. Uh, she's probably that, that kid's probably an adult by now and would never know that their mom was such a fucking whore. Like, dude, this chick literally like she fucked a dude for a check, like a fucking written check. And of course it bounced you stupid motherfucker. What you thought that was going to go through. You took a check for pussy. That's who my girlfriend at the time was hanging out with. So the two of them end up riding with Tenacious D for like one, the Southern leg of the tour. They were gone for like four fucking days. Uh, but you know, to preface, I was already on the way out. Uh, we were not like, we were not cool with each other. It had gotten way toxic. I pretty much didn't want shit to do with her at that point. So at that point to me, it was comical. I st I love Tenacious D not to cast aspersions, but Kyle gas. I mean, he's a fat, bald motherfucker, much older than her at the time. So if she blew him or fucked him jokes on you, motherfucker, that's how much I love Tenacious D, uh, in return for my girlfriend going and, uh, fucking Tenacious D on the Southern leg of their tour. I, I did get to talk to Kyle on the phone. I have autographed stuff. And, uh, and you know what? I still have it to this day. I don't have that girlfriend. So, you know, it worked out for me. So believing that we are Eskimo brothers, I feel very close to Kyle gas. The first time I ever saw them was on a, a show on HBO called Mr. Show. At first they were just appearing as like, you know, characters on the show. And then the next year they would have little shorts that would run after Mish Mr. Show. And they, I thought they were fucking hilarious. I thought Jack Black was just a, a, an immense talent. He was very young at that point. And uh, over the years, you saw it sort of manifest. It started as like a comedy kind of bullshit act. They would come out, 
they were these slovenly fat fucks. They would come out and they would be like, we're the best band in the world. Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, and Molly Hatchet could not be here tonight, but they all had sex and are proud to announce the birth of their two-headed baby, Tenacious D. And two dudes, no band, and they would, they would, these songs were badass. But yeah! And they have managed to parlay this into worldwide arena tours. The Tenacious D sell out large places with no hit songs. Uh, they barely ever put out records, but people come out in droves to see Tenacious D. It seemed like they'd be able to just do this for the rest of their lives. You know, go on tour, the people come out, it's a big love fest. Well, that shit has hit an iceberg. It has sunk. Tenacious D may be over. Uh, like they may be finished as a duo. After Kyle Gass, at a show in Australia, not even in the United States, but of course everywhere, everyone is recording. It was Kyle's birthday, I guess. So Jack brings out this like robot that marches out with a birthday cake. And it comes time for Kyle to make his wish and blow out his candles. And, uh, and he said this. Don't miss Trump next time. <laughs> Thank you. We love you, Cage. Mitch will take it backstage and cut it into pieces, please. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, guys. So that didn't go over well. Um, you know, anybody who listens to the show knows how I feel about this shit. I, I think Donald Trump's a jackass. I, I thought he was a jackass as a Democrat. I think he's a jackass as a Republican. I think he's, uh, he's not good people. So I don't like him. That being said, I don't wish death upon the motherfucker. <laughs> this is America, dude. We're allowed to be as big a jackass as we want to be. Look at me. We see the, the, the polarization of politics here in the United States of, of America has, has not only has it gone into the red, it's been in the red for a, for a bit. And it's come to the point that now it's like sports. We're, we're beyond like right and wrong. And even what we all believe, you know, now it's, it's become my team versus your team. And, you know, I'm a big football fan, American football fan. And, you know, you might talk shit about another team like, oh, dude, your team has fucking murderers and rapists and all that shit. And then but if somebody on your team turns around and murders and rapes, you're like, ah, uh, I don't know if I believe this chick. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of uh, there's a lot of selective shit. You believe what you want to believe. You want to believe your team's going to win. And we've come to that point. We have lost the plot when it comes to politics. One thing I will say though, Jack Black immediately washed his hands of KG and left that motherfucker's dick in the dust. It was not a cool move as a friend. I get where Jack is coming from in the sense that he's he's got a family, he's gotta continue to work and you don't wanna get have this other motherfucker pull you down. But um, if you watch that video, Jack is laughing. It's not like he was appalled in the moment. He thought it was funny. It was a joke. I get when, when, we, when we're talking about political assassination, it's extremely touchy, extremely touchy. And as I said, I would never, ever, ever wish for any sort of physical harm on Donald Trump simply because he's a jackass. <laughs> you know, I've, I've always felt, I felt that way before he even got into politics. Uh, cause if you're okay with him getting shot in the fucking head, what about anybody? You know, you're putting the green light on everyone. Like the left wing has gone so far down the fucking rabbit hole that now they're the ones censoring people and calling for people to be silenced and shit like that. And on the right wing, you they've gone so far that they're past Donald Trump. They don't even like Donald fucking Trump. Somebody explain that to me, by the way. I don't understand what's happened that, that some of these people have gone so far right wing that now they don't like Donald Trump. Explain that to me. I don't know. But yeah, so Kyle immediately got dropped by his fucking management, which is, by the way, just an aside, if you're Kyle Gass's manager, that's the easiest fucking job that exists in this world. 
Kyle Gass has one fucking job. They they put him in movies every now and again as a goof. He doesn't get put in TV shows and movies on the regular. Uh, he does it. He's not in commercials. There's one thing this motherfucker does. He's in Tenacious D. So if you're his manager, you just got to hang around and accept 10% for doing fucking nothing. And for him to also leave Kyle Gass with his dick in the dust, I think that's bullshit, dude. Once the backlash started, Jack Black, as I said, he immediately dumped that motherfucker. He says, and I quote, I was blindsided by what was said at the show on Sunday. I would never condone hate speech or encourage political violence in any form. After much reflection, I no longer feel it is appropriate to continue the Tenacious D tour and all future creative plans are on hold. I am grateful to the fans for their support and understanding. So what he's saying is not only am I canceling the tour, I don't even know if I'm ever going to work with this motherfucker again. Tenacious D is effectively on hiatus because of this fucking one throwaway bullshit little joke that was made on an otherwise non-televised event. I understand people say, oh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes or whatever hacky shit people say. But come on, man. Are we serious? We're going to ruin this fucking guy's life. But I'm getting his back more than his goddamn lifelong friend, Jack Black. Uh, you know, once again, Jack Black, he does a lot more than Kyle does. Jack has a, a reputation to think of. Um... But God damn, that was fast. He, he not only dropped that motherfucker, he said, I don't even think I'm going to work with this motherfucker again. KG had initially put up an apology, but it's recently been taken down. And people said, oh, what's that about? The way I feel about it, my take on it is just, he's already lost everything. So what the fuck? Like, what's the point? Now he's going to apologize for some shit he meant. You know, I saw that joke out in the world. You know, I saw that shit on Reddit. I saw that shit on X. I saw it all over the fucking place. People were making a lot of jokes, lots of memes. I mean, it was an amazing thing. You know, how often have we seen that? When's the last time that we saw like a fucking attempt on a president's life? Like I I've heard of like, oh, you know, we, we were 10 minutes away or something like that. But I mean, for real, has anyone been shot post Reagan? I don't think so. So, I mean, it's an incredibly rare thing. And in our world where we just, uh, we break everything down to the point that it just has no meaning anymore. Of course, there's a million jokes, a million memes. And, and it's just, it's so weird to me that of all people, Kyle fucking gas ends up being the face of this shit. And one of the silliest and most absurd elements of it is this indignation from these right wing motherfuckers. These are the people that uh, LOL'd when Pelosi's husband got beaten with a hammer. These are the people who have made excuses for the January 6th motherfuckers. But, and, and if you're going to do that, once again, that's your right. That's cool. But if it happens to somebody on your team and you're mad, then you're a hypocritical piece of shit, dude. You're not, you're not looking at it from any sort of fair perspective, because if you thought it was funny... For, I mean, dude, Pelosi's husband, regardless of what you think of him, he's a human being and somebody attacked him with a fucking hammer. That's heavy duty. These are the motherfuckers that are always making the, the too soon jokes. They always want to present themselves as being so fucking tough and so fucking edgy. Listen, I'm a supporter of the right to free speech, uh, whether I agree with you or not. And I think if you're selectively outraged then you're, you're not coming from a real place, dude. You're coming from, like I said, a, a sports fan. You're a mark. You're somebody who's gotten so caught up in red versus blue that you're willing to stand for, for pretty much whatever, as long as it's going your way. And then, of course, you would say, well, you know, you, you have your free speech. We're not trying to put him in jail, but there are consequences to the shit you say. So, okay, that's cool, but... As long as you have that same energy across the board, I'm cool with it. If you're, if you're going to say, well, as long as it's my team, then fuck off. I don't give a fuck about your opinion if it's totally colored by the fact that you give a fuck about your team winning. Fuck off.
This shit, it all blows over eventually. How are you gonna be mad at this guy? What a sweet, he's like a little cherub. He's like a sweet baby. How are you gonna be mad at him forever? And he's also old and fucked up. He does nothing else but this. You're take, you're literally forcing him into retirement. And I don't know if this motherfucker has saved his money. I hope he has. He didn't have a huge career. It's not like he could come back to a lot. Either Jack Black will let him do Tenacious D again or he won't. It's a 50-50 proposition. So, uh, so I'm gonna pray for you, Kyle. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but you can fucking hit it up in the comments. And I may read that shit in the listener uh, comments section next time. Speaking of, let's go ahead and get into the extended listener comments. Info at killrockradio.com is where you would send any emails, uh, really about anything. We only have that one fucking email address. Otherwise, if you're on social media, slash or at kill rock radio will normally get you to us get up in our dms comment on shit and uh and we'll gather all that up and the very best shit will get on the air i have a little bit of instant feedback obviously if you've made it to this part of the podcast you just heard my fucking tenacious d bit well that's already been posted online so there's already been some reaction so i have a little bit of instant reaction we got a lot of comments about that. Thank you guys very much. There's one I want to talk about right now. The rest we'll just save for next episode and we'll, we'll talk about it. Maybe some more stuff will have happened. But uh, the title to the video, it was something like Jack Black scapegoats Kyle Gass is Tenacious D over or something like that. It was something like that. Um, and so my homeboy Big Mac came through and he said, that's not what scapegoating is. Now, I want I want to address this. If you're, if you're going by the classic definition involving two individuals and one person does something and blames the other, that's the, the classic scapegoating in that sense. Yes, you're correct. But the way I was looking at it, where I was coming from is that I don't see tenacious D as, as two dudes. I see tenacious D as one entity comprised of two dudes. Um, anybody who knows how, how business works, just the entertainment business, the art business, for the most part, you have to sort of come up with your own corporation, your own company, and that's how you get paid. That's how you really do everything. If you're a band like Tenacious D, you want to form a corporation so you can, so you don't have personal liability if somebody gets hurt on the road or something like that. So this is a Tenacious D show. Um, of course you've got to pace out the show because these shows have to be timed. Like, I mean, it's fucking Cracker Jack timing certain towns. If you don't cut off by 11, they'll cut your fucking sound. You won't even be able to finish your show. So your shit needs to be on time. So I would guarantee fucking tea that the production guys had a note in their shit that said, okay, here's this bit in between this song and this song. We're going to do a five minute bit. Kyle's birthday. We're going to bring a robot out. We need some sound effects. We need a cake and uh, we're going to surprise Kyle with it. Okay, cool. You set that up. That's a bit. Everybody knows about it except Kyle. And the bit ends with a mic being put on Kyle and he's supposed to do an ad lib joke. What I'm saying is if Kyle was the only one who didn't know about it, he's put on the spot to say something. If you know anything about the tenacious D characters, they say fucked up stuff. Oh, geez, that's my biggest weakness outside of my love of Satan. And if you're in one of those shows, if you're Kyle, if you're put on the spot to, to say something, would you likely say the most fucked up shit you could come up with? Yeah. So that's what you're going to do. I mean, that's what I would do. I, I can be a jackass. I understand. So if you're saying the craziest shit that pops off the top of your head, sometimes it doesn't go over like, you know, like what happened here. But even though Kyle is the one who made the statement, what happened was a spontaneous moment within a pre set up uh, bit that he was not aware he was part of. So at very least you can admit that you sort of set this guy up to fuck it up because once again, you're just saying some shit off the top of your head. And sometimes that shit can be offensive as was the case here. What I feel Jack Black should have done. And of course, I understand Jack Black is a big star. He's in movies. He does a ton of voiceover stuff, probably even bigger to him than that. He's currently trying to uh, raise money for the Democratic Party going into this next presidential election. 
So I'm sure on some level he felt like, holy fuck, I, I can't be anywhere near a motherfucker uh, saying that, you know, political violence is OK or anything like that. So I get why Jack shit his pants about the whole thing. But what I what I think they should have done, considering your history, considering that once again, this is some shit that was blamed in the media on Tenacious D. And, uh, you know, if you just look the story up online, I'd say three quarters of them don't even mention Kyle Gass to like the very end of the title, which doesn't even make the screen, you know, uh, it'll be like the dot, dot, dot at the end. So all these accusations were cast at Tenacious D and, uh, you know, or Jack Black bandmate. That's how uh, sort of almost invisible KG is within Tenacious D. People see that as Jack Black's band and he's the lovable sidekick or whatever. You know, the reality is KG taught Jack Black to play the fucking guitar. Jack Black, who has made his entire career in movies and all that shit off of uh, the star making role in School of Rock and he plays a guitar and all that shit. Not to say he wouldn't have learned in the first place, but I'm saying he got his start with KG. Uh, Tenacious D predates all that. Tenacious D paid this motherfucker's bills when he was not a movie star. And now, you know, I would think you'd be driven to, to at least attempt to not throw Kyle under the fucking bus. You'd say, listen, everybody, we apologize. You know, I, I put Kyle on the spot. Kyle said some shit that was really out of hand. I do not support that whatsoever. Uh, we apologize and then have KG do his own apology and all that shit. And then just try to fucking move on. You would file a joint statement once again, as tenacious D the one entity composed of two men. Uh, but that was not the case. That's why I felt that, that Jack black scapegoated Kyle gas at very least. You could say he instigated the situation. Once again, everything in the media was about tenacious D so tenacious D should have made a statement. And if people weren't cool with that, then maybe you got to cancel the tour or whatever. But otherwise, you could have kept the whole fucking thing going. Maybe there would have been less bubbles, less troubles instead of immediately breaking himself off from Tenacious D, separating himself and saying, no, nah, motherfucker, don't blame me. I didn't say that shit. Uh, this is the guy you want. This bald fat fuck over here, KG. I mean, he put the finger right on that motherfucker. Was it even the next day? It might have even been the same fucking day. Who knows? Like a motherfucker who has straight up been by your side for decades <laughs> and you, you didn't wait a day to fuck him up. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's not cool. It's just not cool, man. You could have attempted to stick by this motherfucker. If the heat got too hot, then everybody could say, well, you know what? He tried and, and it just didn't seem like Jack Black <laughs> gave a fuck about trying. That's all. Next, uh, you know, last episode we had talked about Tommy Vex getting arrested and uh, there was a lot of like angry motherfuckers. Tommy Vex, he still does have the nut huggers. I had thought maybe they had all left his side because he's he's really unpopular these days. But anyways, I did get a lot of people getting his back. I don't believe there's been any uh, updates, but um, but my homeboy fatty for president says you call Tommy vexed thick skulled but failed to know the story behind the zombie tribute. The original singer was supposed to sing on the cover. She died on the day she was supposed to record her part. Then they decided to make it a tribute to her and donated the proceeds to her family. So yeah, it's close to the original as a tribute should be. They gave it a small bad wolves twist with the guitar solo. Okay. I don't buy that at all. I mean, first off, I do want to say uh, RIP to Dolores O'Riordan, the original singer of Zombie. Though, I, I like, what an amazing talent. Uh, massively underrated. It's terrible that she died so young. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I, I feel she could still be pumping out amazing shit. Um, but one of the good things that came from her death is that she never got to record her vocals alongside Tommy Vex because she would probably be so fucking ashamed that she was directly responsible for funding this motherfucker. And I feel, I feel peace in knowing that we never had to see that. 
Maybe God itself looked down and said, oh, no, 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 that shit's not happening. You don't like it? Kiss my ass you don't like it. It's my house. I'm not going to have Dolores O'Riordan duetting with Tommy fucking vexed. Dolores, it's your time to come on home, baby girl. Come into the light. And uh, and we didn't have to see that shit. I look for the silver lining in uh, in any bad situation. So that's how I saw it. And uh, as far as them doing it more as a tribute, I sincerely doubt that before Dolores O'Riordan died, they were thinking of doing some interesting take. I don't believe it. I think whether Dolores O'Riordan was part of that song or not, it would have been the same fucking song. And I acknowledge the extra guitar solo. Once again, it's essentially a karaoke Obviously, a lot of people love that song. It's a very popular song. I mean, I would bet any competent rock band could go out and re-record that song, put it out. It'd be a hit again. It's a very popular song. The original still plays on all the alternative stations. So whatever. Anyways, moving on, my homie Angel Diaz, or is that Angel Diaz, says, we have to arrest you because he said she said? Something doesn't add up. Would it make sense instead that he would have already been wanted for something unrelated and that this other thing that happens to his girlfriend just happens to be what makes him go to the precinct? I don't know if he was wanted for anything previously. I do know that you don't just show up and they're like, oh, buddy, I guess we got to arrest you. It's just if you listen to his story, a lot of it just there's there's a lot of little parts that don't make sense. Uh, you know, he claims that the, the grandpa was hitting her with hitting his girlfriend with haymakers, but when the cops show up, they arrest her. Um, that kind of goes against everything I've ever seen of police work in the United States. Normally in a, in a situation where there's a, a domestic dispute called in, if the woman has marks, then the dude's going to fucking jail, whether the woman wants them to or not. It's, it's not a question. The guy goes to fucking jail. So you're going to tell me this grown ass man was hitting her with haymakers and she had not a mark on her. Um, supposedly she was arrested. I don't, I don't know anything about the, the proof to that or whatever, but all I know is when the cops got there, they arrested her and not the grandfather uh, so it makes me wonder who, who had marks, who didn't have marks. Um, it, it just, it just doesn't seem like anything that would happen. It's not impossible, but it just, it doesn't sound like a real thing to me. And my homie, Mr. Death Metal chimes in with the police report contradicts his side of the story. Apparently his girlfriend beat one of her kids. Clearly there was not enough evidence that the father beat the girlfriend but I guess there was enough to say that the girlfriend had beaten up one of her kids. That might be the reason that they're working so hard to get out ahead of it. I don't know. All I know is it's a fucked up situation. Nothing has come of it so far. I guess we'll see. Next, we got uh, some response to the Ronnie Radke story. Ronnie Radke had come out and said that uh, Sebastian Bach of Skid Row fame was a loser and he looked like Chris Jenner fucked Donald Trump. A 60 year old man that looks like Donald Trump meets Caitlyn Jenner. And uh, what else? He was, uh, he couldn't sing anymore. Oh, and he had a tiny cock. I saw how, how your dick is small too. You have a tiny dick. You're like six foot eight with the fucking smallest dick I've ever seen in my fucking life. It's insane. That he had a really tiny penis that uh, Radke had seen it via some weird porno that somebody had shown him. And uh, that, that Sebastian Bach indeed had a tiny cock. I can't believe your dick is so small because you're so tall. You're like tall and, and big, dude. So it's so bizarre that you're like a fucking tall giant with a tiny ass dick. Your dick is tiny, bro. My homie Chris through glass says Ronnie isn't punching down. He's punching back no matter which direction. Of course, he could let it slide. But why should he? It's free marketing and it's entertaining. Plus, Ronnie is also a rapper and hip hop is very competitive and ra rappers don't let things slide. Okay. I think there's something to that. Um, I think it, it is possible that Ronnie is maybe being um, savvy 
when it comes to social media, because like in rap, in the rap world, a lot of times people will have beefs and it'll sort of lift both people up for a second while the beef is going on. So if, if Ronnie's coming from that world, maybe he's thinking, you know what? People still know Sebastian Bach. I'm going to shit on him. Maybe he'll say something back. We can do a little back and forth, maybe uh, stir up some interest. And of course, all the, uh, all the websites, dickheads like me will talk about it. And, and it is a way to sort of market yourself in a sense. Next, my homie X Tink says laptops are especially important for falling in reverse because they have a ton of songs with straight up rap beats, synths, orchestra, etc. They also use the laptops for stage lights and whatnot. Ronnie Radke is awesome, by the way. Also, he claps back because he believes that if people talk shit about him, he has a right to defend himself. Gotta remember, Ronnie has dealt with a lot of false allegations and his reputation was ruined. So he has a natural urge to defend himself and his name. Now that's something, the little bit I know of Ronnie Radke, I know in his past, he had uh, like a situation where like somebody fucking died and everybody accused him of being a murderer and shit. I believe he's been accused of like beating chicks up. Um, I don't know of everything, but I know in the past he's had a lot of allegations and I could see maybe having some sort of um, just like you get more of an itchy trigger finger because you're concerned of people putting you back in that situation. Um, so I, I could see that before we go. I just wanted to uh, say info at killrockradio.com is where you send any messages, really anything you would have to say to us uh, or you get into our DMS, you get into our, our comments, all that shit. And I try to reply to as many people as I can also go to killrockradio.com. Uh, to check out our merch, we've got like this sticker that I illustrated and uh, we got a fucking koozie with the logo. It keeps your shit cool uh, during these hot summer months and keeps your little fingers sweet and dry. Go to killrockradio.com and you can get those. Uh, of course, all that money goes right the fuck back into the show. Thank you guys so much for your support. So come on back and uh and we'll and we'll keep that shit going here on kill rock radio i will talk to you crazy motherfuckers later Peace. <laughs>Got any questions or comments? Send them to info at killrockradio.com. To keep up with the latest and catch up on past interviews and clips, search Kill Rock Radio on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to Kill Rock Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm like, oh my God, just listen to it already. Wherever you listen to podcasts.